The following video compares a healthy temporomandibular joint and the usual progressive stages of degeneration in an unhealthy joint. This video is made possible utilizing TMJ autopsy specimens and therefore contains graphic images. Here you can see the condyle and the fossa of the temporal bone along with the articular eminence. Here is the disc above the condyle. Here is the upper joint compartment and the lower joint compartment filled with fluid and blood. There is a thin soft tissue covering on the disc as well as on the fossa you can see gets a little bit thicker around the eminence. The posterior band or ligament is attached to the back of the disc. The lower head of the lateral pterygoid is seen here attached to the condyle and here is the superior head attached to the disc. In the healthy temporomandibular joint, the biconcave disc follows the movement of the condyle through opening and closing movements. The anterior and posterior ligaments can be seen holding the disc in place. This joint most likely functions quietly and without symptoms. When a disc becomes anteriorly displaced from trauma or microtrauma, the posterior ligament holding the disc in position becomes stretched, allowing the disc to rest in front of the condyle during closure. As the jaw opens and the condyle moves forward, the disc jumps back onto the condylar head, creating an audible click which the patient sometimes hears. During closure, the condyle moves up and back, pushing the disc forward, sometimes creating a second click. These patients are usually beginning to develop noticeable symptoms. In the anteriorly displaced disc without reduction, the posterior ligament has stretched beyond its capacity to recapture or pull back the disc into position. The disc remains balled up in front of the condyle, limiting forward movement of the mandible, as well as the patient's ability to open. The condyle becomes positioned more upward and back in the fossa, leading to further impingement of the posterior nerve and blood vessel complex within the posterior fossa. In the latter stages of temporomandibular joint dysfunction, the disc can become permanently positioned in front of the condyle. In this joint, the condyle has worn through the posterior ligament and there is again compression in the posterior segment with bone-on-bone -bone contact leading to degenerative crepitus within the joint. Opening can be limited or normal depending on the amount of stretching and adaptation occurring over the years. These patients exhibit a myriad of chronic TMJ symptoms.